turn to our Blessed Mother, the Mother of each and every one of us, and the Mother that desires to bring us into the Kingdom of Heaven. And we turn to her for the gift of the Holy Ghost, and we may understand the great truth that God has revealed to us in and through His Word this night. And so together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Jesus had come into the house of Simon. Simon, whom we will call Peter. And they told him that his mother-in-law had a deep fever, a great fever. In other words, she was really sick. Did Simon Peter say, Lord, will you come and heal my mother-in-law? Not on your life. He didn't say anything. They said something. The apostles said, she has a great fever. They interceded for the woman. And so, our Lord went in and touched her. And the fever left her. And she got up and she began to serve. Each and every one of us has a great fever. That great fever is this desire to sin. This concupiscence of the mind, this concupiscence of the body, this concupiscence that seeks, give me, give me, give me. It's a great fever. We say, how do we, how do we, we begin to realize right then and there, it's not me, but rather the old Lord who must touch me. And that is why we confess our sins. To be touched by the Lord. The priest opens himself up and says, Lord, allow me to be your instrument of healing. Allow me to be the one who touches the heart and soul of another to bring that heart and soul to heaven. Because every soul created by Almighty God is meant to give glory to God in every moment under all circumstances. There is no exception. That is why every one of us is an opportunity to the other. We create frustrations for people. We create difficulties. We tease. We laugh. And yet, all of that is meant to help each one of us grow in the gifts that are most important for the kingdom of heaven. Humility. There's nothing you can do that offends me. Nothing you can say that offends me. What does help me is to realize that there are calumnies, and there are criticisms, there are all kinds of different things that they say about you. And yet you come to the realization, it's all good. A woman came to me after confession one time. She said, Father, I want to ask your forgiveness. I said, why? Well, because of the things I said about you. I said, oh, I want to thank you. What? I want to thank you. You have made a place of glory for me in heaven because blessed are they when they curse you and persecute you and do all kinds of odd things about you for the sake of Christ. Because I only work for the sake of Christ and Christ's glory and the salvation of souls. So I said, I thank you. And we went away to friends. You cannot take offense and especially when somebody comes up to you and wants to be forgiven because of a word they said in what? Anger? In frustration? Or whatever. There are others who are gossips behind your back who will never come up and say to you, I'm sorry. Instead, they cut you down and you can never give them the forgiveness they need. They're not hurting me. They're not hurting you. But they need us because they used us to let their pride rise. And so that person that we have hurt by our tongues in his reputation or her reputation, we must go and seek pardon from. That is why our Lord Jesus Christ teaches us every useless word, you will be accounting for it at the judgment seat. Every blasphemy, well, all these things that come out of the mouth come out of the heart. And so that is why it's so important for us to train our heart by reading and reflecting upon the scripture. 
And here we have a beautiful scripture that tells us in Luke that our Lord Jesus Christ touches the mother-in-law of Simon. And that touch gives her the ability to serve each and every one of those. And now what happens? The whole flock of people come to our Lord and there they have demons or they have sickness. And he touches the sick and he casts out the demons and what do they do? We know who you are. You're the Holy One of God, the Son of God. And he says, don't speak. He will not have the demonic proclaiming him. Instead, he has the angels and saints in his goodness. That proclaims the dignity and the divinity of Christ. And so, we have this great gift of entering into this eternal moment in which God is touching the world, touching the souls that have to be touched in order that they might find the salvation that God desires for them and might give God the glory. Because this is what must take place. We must come to the point where His glory is the meaning of my life. Priority number one, to give glory to the one who has given me everything. What does he give us? Satisfaction. That's the fruit of giving glory to God. Satisfaction. I'm finding out the meaning of my life. I'm finding out that everything else doesn't really matter. What does matter is I humble myself before Almighty God, give Him the glory, and I'm happy. I'm happy. Because I now know I'm fulfilling my nature. So just as the birds sing, the fish swim, and the lions roar, each one of them proclaiming the glory of God by their nature, so man who has an intellect and the will has to come to the intellect and say, intellect, what is it that I'm all about? And the truth enters into the intellect and it says, I'm about glorifying God. Ah, now the will says, I have the object of my love. That is to give glory to my God who has loved me so much that he sent his only begotten Son that whomsoever might believe in him shall have eternal life. Now, practical. A little girl happened to have been given by Daddy a lot of little beads, golden ones, red ones, purple ones, you know what I mean? All these different colors, and she's making little bracelets and things with them. And she's just having a great time playing with bees. The father, who's quite wealthy and a good Catholic gentleman, watches. And one night, he has a fire going. And he says to her, Sylvia, do you love those bees? She looks at her daddy, oh daddy, I love my bees. Sylvia, put all your bees into a box for me, please. Oh. So she puts them all into a box. And there the roaring fire is. And the dad says, Sylvia, do you love me? Yes, Daddy, I love you. Sylvia, do you trust me? Yes, Daddy, I trust you. Sylvia, throw that box into the fire. Daddy, my beads? And the tears start coming down her eyes. Sylvia, do you love me? Yes, Daddy. Sylvia, throw the box into the fire. Sylvia threw the box into the fire and watched her bees burn up. She was in tears. It hurt. But the dad said, Sylvia, your obedience, and he brought out another box, gives you this. She opens up that box and she sees pearls and diamonds, rubies, all in a nice chain, beautiful, and her eyes just went, <gasps> did she forget about her beads? You bet she did. Well, God is doing that with us. You see the world? It's a bead world. But he has a treasure of diamonds and pearls and rubies for us in the kingdom of heaven. But we have to throw away what we think is so important in this world to be able to grasp the treasure of eternal life. To see through the veil and to understand there's a great gift waiting for you if you but throw away that which you think is so important. As we move through Lent, let us ask our Lord to touch us as he touched Simon's mother-in-law, to heal us, to make us realize 
What is most important in our life is to glorify God, and in glorifying God, all things then redound to my welfare. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. I remind you, too, this evening's Mass is for the healing of Irene.